Hi Anil, thanks for joining us today. Um, can you tell us a little bit about the work that you do at Carers Worldwide and the experiences that led you to start the charity? Thanks Paul. Uh, I'm the founder and the executive director of Carers Worldwide. Two experiences have inspired me to set up Carers Worldwide. One was before I moved to UK, I was in India working on the issue of mental health, particularly in rural areas. Uh, so whenever I used to meet with uh, uh, caregivers or family members, these are the unpaid family members who have been caring for their loved one, uh, they used to ask two questions. Uh, one was why this happened to us? What did we do? Was it a past karma or a sin or somebody has done witchcraft? Um, so whatever knowledge I had or understanding I had about mental health, I was able to respond to that question adequately. But the second question which had a huge impact on me because of the uh, stigma associated with mental illness and there was so much of social pressure on the family members. The second question caregivers used to ask me was what happens if I die tomorrow? Really I never thought about that question uh, until then and it hit me so hard. The second one is I would like to share with you Paul is about uh, my own experience being a caregiver. Uh, it's a bit quite emotional. Ruth and I have two beautiful daughters. Uh, when our second daughter was born, we discovered that she has a Down syndrome. It, it hit us so hard. The kind of questions what caregivers were asking in rural areas in India, the same questions were going through our mind. Why us? What did we do? Of course, it is privileged to have her. Maya is enriching our life and if there wasn't a support from friends and families and professionals, I don't think I would have been sitting here and sharing that experiences. These two experiences led me to ask a simple question. Imagine what is it like country like India where I'm born and brought up, where there is no acknowledgement, no recognition of the wonderful work done by the caregivers day in day out. And I do feel they are the backbone of our health system, but absolutely there is no appreciation of the wonderful role they, they are playing. So yeah, those are the two experiences have inspired me to think about uh, the caregivers and their health and well-being and their recognition. Why is it that you think there's no appreciation and recognition for caregivers? Carers are invisible, they are hidden behind the curtain. They are among us, but we don't have the eyes to see them. And uh, maybe that is because of that invisibility, uh, there is not much recognition. Partly in developing countries, everybody expected that there is a concept of joint family or extended family. Uh, so there is a lot of support system is there and also culture. It is expected that uh, you look after your parents or relatives who is sick or uh, disabled and all. Unfortunately, last 10 to 15 years, that concept of joint family and extended family is eroding faster than one could imagine. Now more and more nucleus families. One of the reasons why there is no recognition is because there is no statistics about it. And nobody knows how many caregivers are there, for example, in India and Nepal or even Bangladesh where we are working currently. Uh, <clears throat> if I apply one in eight adults are caregivers or carers in UK, if I apply that statistic to Indian context, for example, it's a conservative, there is going to be 150 million caregivers. That's a conservative estimate. What I'm saying is it is two and a half times the size of the UK population. That is the kind of scale of caregivers we are talking, but absolutely there is no recognition by the state government or a national government. Of course, there are statistics are there about various issues, number of people uh, suffering from mental health issues or people with disability, people with dementia. All these issues need a caregiver, but absolutely nothing. In country like in, uh, India or Nepal, we do census every year 
and there is no question asked around the caregivers. Do, does the family has caregiver who is looking after somebody who need that care? Absolutely nothing. And uh, sometime uh, we also count how many animals we have in the families, but not the role played by the caregivers. And the second one is there is no, uh, not much research has been done. There is no evidence around the caregivers. So burden of caring on the primary caregivers or the family members, impact of caring, what is it is happening on family members as well as the other members in the family. Absolutely nothing. Whatever little bit of literature is available, it is the grey literature. Here and there some uh, wonderful uh, non-governmental organization or charities who have done some research. Not much academic research has been done. Uh, so because of that, there aren't any policies around uh, caregivers. There are fantastic policies about person who has been affected, whether you call HIV AIDS or uh, elderly, uh, mental health issues, disability, dementia, all those things. There is a word they use part of the policies and act as well as caregivers. Caregiver, they use the word to care for somebody, but there is no service provision or support for them. Do healthcare professionals recognize the work that carers do? Quite often, professionals don't recognize carers are also professionals. They know what is best for their loved one. Quite often, we look at carers are labor force, not as a knowledge force. We as a professionals, we hardly spend a time with them and we ask so many questions and at the end, whatever information we provide or skills or knowledge or training, it is the caregivers who are implementing that knowledge. Whatever changes we are seeing in the person being cared for, that is because of the carers. We as a professionals, we hardly spend a time with them and we ask so many questions and at the end, whatever information we provide or skills or knowledge or training, it is the caregivers who are implementing that knowledge. Then we are seeing the changes. But when the changes have occurred, I am taking the credit. We are not giving the credit to the caregivers. We are, on the contrary, we are making them feel guilty about it. You are not doing, uh, not taking good care, but we fail to understand why that is the case. Quite often, uh, most of the development workers with whom I work, quite often they put a label, caregivers are the barriers, they are the non-cooperative. So my challenge to them was, is the, really the caregiver the barrier or is it our inability to understand the bigger picture? Have you asked a simple question why they were unable to bring person with mental illness, for example, to a mental health camp? Because there was no food in the family. That is most important to them. So they locked that person or uh, they have to go to the work and earn money to feed the, however many mouths in the family are there. That is most important. But our focus was again only on the person who is suffering. We never looked at the bigger picture. So when I make this statement, that opens, yes, you are right. We never ask from the carer's point of view. Always we are looking at person with disability or elderly or person with HIV AIDS or mental health issues, but never from the carer's point of view. One of the carers that we've spoken to in India, Aparna, um, talked about the big problem of stigma surrounding things like mental health and uh, physical disability in India. Is that common in developing countries? And can you tell me a bit about that, I know? That's right, uh, Paul. It is very common, particularly mental health uh, issues. Stigma is so um, high. Uh, if a family has a member of the family is suffering from mental health issues, um, one relatives stop visiting them neighbors start to avoid them. They feel that still these are um, issues that if we start engaging with them, then I might contact that mental health uh, problem. So although the science and uh, there is a greater knowledge of 
biochemical changes in the brain and there are trigger factors and risk factor which will lead to so but rural areas still uh, there is no uh, sensitization or awareness and also there is no service for example just i want to give an example a country like india we have 1.2 billion population can you believe that we have more just over 3000 psychiatrists just over 3000 and uh, maybe over 1000 psychiatric social worker this is the situation most of these psychiatrists are living in cities just imagine person uh, suffering from mental health issues in rural area it is a dream come true for him or her to see a psychiatrist qualified so first point of contact for them is faith healers because these faith healers are the uh, people living in the community who has some understanding some knowledge and all if the carer starts to suffer ill health what's the knock-on effect of that for the care recipient huge knock-on effect is there um, cared for individual will be worried about whether I'll be getting timely food uh, or somebody will be changing my uh, diapers uh, or who will be able to take me to the bathrooms. So all these activity daily living skills which carers are providing, huge, huge impact are there. You talked in the first story about the importance and the impact of support groups. Just how important have you found them to be with the carers that you've brought together in these groups? I won't be doing the justice really by sitting here and sharing. One has to experience and be there part of that group. One adult carer, um, she had three disabled children, um, muscular dystrophy and husband died uh, three years ago. And after a few months of passing away her husband, all the family relatives stopped visiting her family. Um, because they think that if we visit, she will ask money and she doesn't have any means to repay that money. So whatever resources she had, she was able to survive and provide the support to the children and all. And it was affecting her health. She was not having proper sleep not able to take nutritious food, simple nutritious food, unable to go to work. And uh, she was uh, almost attempted three times to commit suicide. And our carers group came to know about her situation. One of the carers went to her house and talked to her, spent an hour. We know your situation, you try to do this one. Why can't you give just one hour time to us, come on so and so date and meet with other carers in a similar situation? Um, so, with great difficulty, she was able to join the group and uh, attend the meeting. And every carers were able to share their experiences and uh, how, what the situation was, what the situation is now. And um, she found very moving. Uh, at the end of that meeting, she was saying, I found a purpose in my life. I know there is a great difficulty moving forward, but these are my family. These are my friends. If I need, I can uh, call upon them. And now she became a leader of that group, the one who wanted to commit the suicide. Can you put the value on that? And she was saying that I found a confidence and courage to lead the life. I know the road ahead is still difficulty, but these are 18 members are my friends. Even my family is not close to me. These are the 18 support system. I cannot emphasize the importance of this. And uh, maybe because all are going through the similar situation, they are more uh, empathetic to each other's uh, uh, issues and they feel that it is important to come together and share our experiences and learn from each other. Because of this emotional uh, support groups, they are feeling less lonely, less isolated and they don't feel that much vulnerable. There is a support system is there. What do you think is most crucial to securing a better future for carers in the regions that you work in? 
recognize the vital role played by the carers and respond to their needs and address their issues they are also human being they are part of the society they have the need they have the issues and they have the right as well and if carers are empowered the whole family is empowered one realization i had uh, uh, paul was all of us irrespective of whether you are rich or poor whatever caste you belong to it doesn't discriminate the issue of care giving doesn't discriminate one or the other day all of us either you will be a carer or somebody will be providing the care i don't know when that will happen but during our lifetime so we will play one of those roles in my opinion carers are wounded healers they have wound within them but nobody has the eyes to see that wound to heal that wound but instead they are caring and providing all the love and that uh, care they need to provide their loved one um so i said earlier also it is important if you want to see the change in the person who need the care first provide the support and attention to the caregiver then almost 50 to 60 percent of your issues are resolved do you think that really actually it's it doesn't take much to set things in motion to really improve things for carers absolutely i was able to demonstrate that of course what i'm doing is very very small scale and recently i came back from nepal and uh, director of education department anil it is so important we never thought about the caregivers always uh, we were thinking why that particular boy or girl is dropped out of school made us to think and he promised that he will be doing the teachers training as a compulsory highlighting the issues of child carers so these are the simple things uh, we were able to do um and uh, in india and nepal we promoted five carers association these are the independent for the carers of the carers by the carers organization and these are run by the carers itself they are not only engaged with the policy makers but also the service providers they are also becoming the part of the bigger larger uh, networking groups uh, if there are already disability groups is there or elderly group or mental health group how could you highlight the issues of your carers and the importance of their role and uh, these organization start to think about inclusion of caregivers into the development process so our intervention is like a if i could give an analogy it's a like a drop of ink in a bucket full of water you don't need a whole bottle of ink to change the color thanks very much you know thank you paul